the following video, we're going to explore polygonal modeling techniques um, by trying to replicate uh, this uh, complex piece of modern furniture. Let's begin. Before I do anything in my viewport, I like to uh, uh, analyze uh, basically what I'm looking at and just to kind of give me an idea of what I'm going to try and, and do to kind of solve this problem. Oh. So uh, we're looking at something that has uh, somewhat of a complex shape. It has a bit of an S shape. Uh, not only that, uh, but uh, it's made of uh, at least three or four different pieces. It has a main kind of base piece and then like a, a cushion uh, part and then uh, just a couple cushion kind of pillow things that are on top. <coughs> So, um, uh, basically my approach to this is going to be uh, starting by creating uh, the base part and then, uh, which is going to be one piece as an S shape. Then uh, I'm going to make a copy of that and that's going to be what I'm going to be using to create these uh, cushions uh, part that's right on top of it. Uh, and then I'm going to follow along and um, start cutting into different pieces uh, again I'm gonna have to kinda start making sure that it's one piece first and then kinda cut the different pieces to make sure I can do this um, <clears throat> so let's begin I'm gonna start by creating a primitive my viewport uh, I'm actually gonna start in my perspective so let's see primitives Okay, I need to point out that I'm using uh, marking menus um, and my uh, screen capture and software is not really showing them. <coughs> but that's the way that I was able to uh, create my cube and it was by using my marking menu. Uh, if you want to figure out how to do that, please uh, look at the video called uh, Maya Creating Mar uh, Customized Marking Menus. Um, so I'm gonna need to change the shape of this a little bit. It's a little bit too big. Um, so the depth of it, I don't really need it to be that big. In fact, uh, in fact, uh, something kind of trim like this is is fine. Uh, the height of it can be about a uh, feet and a half, and the width about three feet, maybe four. maybe one foot for the height <laughs> alright so I'm gonna proceed and go into my top viewport and I need to find my okay and I'm gonna create I'm gonna use uh, a spline, mo uh, spline tool to be able to draw out the shape the S shape of this piece of furniture so, um, again, I'm using my marking menu here. So, uh, let's see, I have one for curves, and this one's going to be the vest here. So, I'm just going to start kind of drawing out what that shape uh, looks like, which is something along these lines. And uh, I kind of always go in here and just kind of move my points around a little bit so something along these lines <coughs> I'm also going to go ahead and maybe turn uh, my geometry a little bit kind of wanted to follow the same kind of direction as my uh, spline here. Uh, one thing I could do is actually snap it along the... so I know it's actually in the center of it. And I'm gonna switch to my perspective. Um, let's see, it didn't snap the way I hoped, but I can just... I need to make sure that this plan is actually in the center of the face that I'm about to extrude. And again, I can go into 
my top viewport to make sure that's the case. I really don't want it intersecting with my um, with my polygon. That could give me some interesting results. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's right here. Again, to make sure that it's following along uh, this, um, I could snap it one more time. All right, and then just kind of move it back a little bit. Uh, go back to my, my my perspective view. Okay, that's gonna work just fine. Next thing I'm gonna do is select a face in my polygon and select the spline that I want to extrude along. And then I'm a, I'm gonna go and select my extrude 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 tool. Sorry. Um, so that's my extrude, and again, it kind of took my uh, face and just kind of extruded it along. Um, but it's not really following the shape of uh, my spline, and the reason for that is because by default, the extruded along the spline, it, it has one subdivision, so we actually need to give it more divisions in order for it to be smoother. <coughs> I think something like this will work really well. As a matter of fact, and uh, it looks like it's actually following the shape that I want. The next thing I'm going to do is actually make a copy of it so that I can actually use that <coughs> for my um, top part right over here. <coughs> so, um, one thing to keep in mind when you extrude along a spline is that there is a dependency between uh, the original vertex that we drew and my polygon here uh, so if I were to manipulate my curve my geometry is going to follow along as such and Perhaps I don't want that dependency to be there anymore since I already have what I want. Um, and again, the reason for that is because if, for instance, if I move my spline, it's going to affect the way that my polygon looks like this. Um, I can move my geometry just fine, but the moment that I move my spline, it's going to completely mess up my model. So I want to get rid of that dependency by going to modify, <coughs> sorry, edit, and delete by type, and I want to select history. So now the dependency between the spline and the object is no longer there. I don't need the spline anymore. Um, so I'm going to do Control D just to duplicate this. Okay. And that's going to be my top part. Um, so do All right, so let's start. Let's start creating um, some of the detail of the base part of the of this couch. <coughs> uh, as you can tell, uh, it's basically this part right here and this and the backing of it it's basically one piece with this kind of laid on top so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and create that um, I'm gonna start by inserting a couple loops so I'm gonna go into my insert edge loop tool and this right here is gonna be mostly for the backing of it that might be a little bit too thin I'm gonna do something like that and here I'm actually gonna make a copy of the one that I just changed gonna make it easier for me to actually uh, shape the the cushions to follow that shape so on the top one <coughs> I'm going to go into my um, top viewport. Again, I want to do this in my orthographic. On this one, I want to make sure that I delete these polygons over here. So 
I'm just gonna go... And again, this is... I'm deleting the polygons on this one. Because <clears throat> this is gonna be... The cushion part that's on top of the main base part. And I think I just deleted way too many. Um, I think it's about there where I want it to be. Because as you can tell... Uh, the backing right here kind of stops here and then just basically uh, this cushy part so let's just kind of change back into my perspective I'm also going to turn on my wireframe and shade it so I can see what's going on with my geometry at the same time uh, <coughs> and then on this one I'm actually going to delete a couple more faces on the one on top. Okay, then I'm going to take the bottom one and I'm going to select these faces. And I'm going to extrude them up. So, extruding things up as such, and I messed up because I missed one of my faces. So, I gotta make sure I select that. Come on, all right. So, I'm gonna try the extrusion one more time. All right, so we have uh top and bottom part at this point <coughs> and I want to go into my cushy kind of section here and kind of fix up this geometry a little bit uh, in order to not kind of be messed up by the fact that I have this other one right here I'm just gonna go ahead and isolate this piece <coughs> and just kind of work on it individually Um, so this part I'm basically just gonna go into my match my mesh uh, menu over here and just kind of fill a hole and again it's gonna be doing some weird stuff uh, like this and the problem is that we don't really have uh, enough resolution for it to kind of maintain that so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of bridge some of these faces for this and uh, let's see you actually find it under your edit mesh and I'm just gonna click on bridge right here let's see if if I do a fill a hole it's gonna cover that part and it did but at the same time I actually have to come here and kinda connect a couple of components um, and again it's just to keep a nice flow of my geometry um, so let's go into right here. Just gonna go ahead and really quickly just connect these components. Oops. And uh, basically what I'm doing right here is that I just, uh, I selected my uh, Connect Components tool. <coughs> and then I'm just repeatedly clicking on G to redo my last command. Um, I think I also need to get rid of a little bit of geometry over here. Because it's going to be intersecting with my couch. And I already did that right there. Alright, so this concludes uh, the first part of this video, and on the next one we're going to start working on some of the details.